all right friends once we have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and now talk about the structure of etfs now as i have told you earlier the structure of etfs is just like an open ended mutual fund so it is basically an open ended fund structure it is not a closed ended fund structure now here comes one point of difference see as compared to mutual fund the exchange traded fund is not traded based on nav it is traded based on its market price that is one big difference compared to a mutual fund so what happens if i go ahead in this particular discussion i would want to give you specific differences between an open ended fund and closed ended fund and you would then find that this exchange traded fund in terms of its structure it is trying to again pull the best of advantages of both open ended and closed ended now see the beauty of this particular fund the way it is structured before i go deeper into this discussion let us just have a quick understanding of what is an open ended fund and closed ended fund though i have covered this in my other lectures a detailed discussion on open ended funds and closed ended funds which are basically mutual funds here i am not going to go deeper into that but a quick discussion definitely is required see imagine an asset management company is coming up with an offering of a new fund and it has decided that it will come up with uh, 1 million units of this fund priced at dollar 1 each 1 million units priced at dollar 1 so the initial collection that the fund issuer will be collecting from the investors will be 1 million dollars now if this 1 million units which were initially formed are not supposed to change in other words the mutual fund company is not supposed to issue any new units or redeem any existing units then it becomes a closed ended fund then it cannot be traded by issuing and redemption by the mutual fund company it will be traded in a stock exchange now if it is going to be traded in a stock exchange it will be traded not at nav but it will be traded at market price now what happens suppose you are one of the investor in a closed ended fund and one particular day you would want to sell out all the units that you are holding the last traded price on that day was suppose 3.12 dollars per unit you want to sell all your holdings but that was the last traded price current price is not there because no buyer is available to buy these units buyer wants to give the best offer as 2 dollars per unit only against the last traded price of 3.12 even the nav of that particular closed ended fund was close to 3 dollars but no one is willing to buy then how will an investor sell his or her units if there is no buyer willing to buy this is a problem this problem happens with closed ended fund this problem won't happen with an open ended fund why in an open ended fund today you want to liquidate your investment whatever be the prevailing nav based on that nav you sell all the units back to the mutual fund company so that flexibility is there in an open ended fund which is not found in closed ended fund that is why the structure of etf is like open ended fund where additional units can be issued and existing units can be redeemed the problem of liquidity won't ever arise when someone wants to buy units of this etf 
it is not going to ever happen that there is no seller available seller will always be available if someone wants to sell the units buyer will always be available who could play the role of this counterparty we are going to learn that and as i said earlier this is going to be a fantastic feature of an exchange traded fund so what happens in case of an open ended fund the additional units can be issued existing units can be redeemed same feature is adopted by the exchange traded fund but the convenience of trading it is offering like a closed ended fund because the trading will happen at the stock exchange at the prevailing market price another big difference between an exchange traded fund and closed ended fund where both are traded in stock markets where both are actively traded the base or the fair value of any fund will be its nav correct its realizable value or market value of all assets minus the liabilities that it is owning that net asset value divided by number of units will be the net asset value per unit whether it is a closed ended fund or an exchange traded fund but what happens in case of a closed ended fund the market price can deviate significantly from the nav whereas in case of etf the market price will not deviate significantly from the nav if there is a deviation it's a mechanism in case of an exchange traded fund that the market makers and the participants the active participants or authorized participants will be always there to make changes in the trading volume as well as in terms of creating and redeeming the units in such a way that the price will not deviate much from the nav that is why i'm telling you when we compare an index fund and stock i told you that time that exchange traded fund takes the advantage of both of these likewise here when i'm talking about a vis a vis comparison with a mutual fund which could be open ended fund versus closed ended fund again exchange traded fund is picking advantages from both and discarding their disadvantages so from all aspects you will be finding that becoming an investor in an exchange traded fund could be a very nice move for any investor and that is why awareness about what are exchange traded funds it is so important so let us write something more about the structure of etfs what we have just discussed open ended fund structure most etfs are structured as open ended funds or unit trust or unit investment trusts they issue and redeem shares in large blocks known as creation units please mind this particular word here the word shares is just mentioned over here which actually resembles the units of the fund so please write up this much and then i take you ahead all right friends so once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and now talk about the key components of an etf now when i talk about key components of an etf i am talking about the participants over here investors completely kept aside i am not counting investors as a key component because investor will be there what i am trying to explain to you is with respect to the management of etf there will be four parties which i will call as key components number 1 is the sponsor or issuer of the etf number 2 is the custodian number 3 is the authorized participant and number 4 is the role of market maker now one by one let us talk about this so the sponsor or the issuer of an etf is basically going to manage or operate the fund so the fund will be initiated as an ipo by the sponsor or issuer and this party is going to continually manage the fund 
Second party that is custodian also plays an important role that is taking care of the assets of the ETF. So, someone has to look into whether the assets have been in proper accounting. So, the custodian is taking care of the custody and accounting aspects of the ETF. Now, these two parties definitely their role is important, but the bigger role what I consider in terms of actively managing this ETF is by the other two parties which include the authorized participants and the market makers. So, let us first write something about the sponsorer or issuer I explained to you. The entity that creates the ETF responsible for its management and administration. The second party custodian is the entity that holds the ETF assets ensuring their safekeeping and accounting. Third party that is authorized participants. These are large financial institutions that have exclusive right to create or redeem units. Now, when we were talking about the structure of the ETF, that structure of ETF is open ended fund structure. That time I told you that there will be creation as well as redemption of units of ETF. But how it will happen? It cannot happen through public. Public cannot get their units redeemed. If public wants to trade, they will just be allowed to trade in the exchange. Public in general cannot create or redeem these units. Neither the fund operator can do that. It is the authorized participant who can get involved in creating this and how they do is we are going to talk about this in detail and that is why the biggest role is the role of this authorized participant. So, authorized participants what process they exactly carry out for creating and redeeming the units that is what we have to learn and that is the focus point. On the other side we have the fourth participant as market makers. These provide the required liquidity in the exchange. So, as I said when I was explaining the drawbacks of a closed ended fund that when an investor who wants to liquidate his or her investment would want to sell out all the units. There has to be a counterparty who is going to buy the units. In a closed ended fund that could be a big question mark that if you want to sell your units whether a buyer will be available or not. Trading volume can affect your trading experience, but in case of exchange traded fund because of the presence of these market makers this problem would not arise at all. So, when you want to buy units there will always be a seller available as a counterparty. When you want to sell units there will always be a buyer available as a counterparty. So, let us do one thing let us first write up this whole thing and then I take you ahead. Alright friends once you have completed writing this much let us move ahead and continue writing further about authorized participants. Authorized participants are large financial institutions such as investment banks or other financial firms. They are approved by the ETF sponsor to perform creation and redemption activities. APs that is authorized participants can create new units of an ETF by delivering a specific basket of underlying securities to the ETF sponsor in return they receive a large block of ETF units known as a creation unit. Conversely, APS can redeem ETF shares or units by delivering creation units back to ETF sponsor in exchange for the underlying securities. So, basically before you start writing this let me explain this point to you. How any fund would operate there will be underlying securities right the securities in which the fund has invested those securities the authorized participant will create a basket of those securities 
hand over those securities to the operator that is the sponsor or issuer and in exchange it is the operator that will be providing a big chunk of units of ETF to this active or authorized participant. In this case it is no monetary transaction between the two it could be treated like you know a barter exchange where in place of the basket of securities provided by the authorized participants the sponsor or the issuer is creating additional units we call these as creation units likewise when it is an opposite scenario when the authorized participant would want to redeem their units they would surrender those certain number of units to the fund issuer and in exchange the fund issuer will provide the basket of securities back to the authorized participants. So basically these are not purchasing and selling units they are exchanging these units with the securities which are underlying the fund that is how additional units can be created or existing units can be redeemed why and when is this done that is a typical question now this is generally going to happen when there is a big deviation in the price of these ETFs compared to their NAVs whenever there is a big deviation the authorized participants will find this as an opportunity either they will take the advantage of the situation by creating additional units or by redeeming existing units how they do is we are going to talk about that ahead but first you write this whole thing quickly all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and continue writing further now let us write about the importance of authorized participants first aspect is with respect to the arbitrage mechanism now what exactly is the role of these uh, authorized participant in terms of arbitrage let me explain this to you see first of all you should understand that it is the authorized participant who is responsible for creating and redeeming the units of ETF so the participant plays a dynamic role when it comes to any arbitrage opportunity how imagine that the NAV of the fund is found to be different from the price at which it is traded it can be either way either it is overpriced or it is underpriced now what you would generally do anything which is underpriced you would want to buy anything which is overpriced you would want to sell but this buying and selling doesn't happen with uh, payment of cash or receipt of cash this happens by those creation units or by redemption units so the idea is to bring the market price close to NAV so this kind of arbitrage opportunity if it is arising it is giving signs of inequilibrium correct because at equilibrium prices there is no arbitrage opportunity so the idea is the pricing that we are talking about should be the no arbitrage kind of pricing so if there is an arbitrage opportunity the authorized participants will play their role to bring the equilibrium back so let us write something about this arbitrage mechanism first so under the heading arbitrage mechanism you write authorized participants or APs can help the ETFs market price close to its NAV if the ETF trades at a price different from its NAV APs can profit from the price difference by creating or redeeming units this arbitrage activity helps realign the ETFs market price with its NAV then the other importance could be with respect to liquidity by creating and redeeming ETF units APs ensure there is enough supply and demand in the market making it easier for investors to buy and sell ETF units without causing significant price changes so please write up this much and then I take you ahead 
All right, friends, once we have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue writing further about market makers. Market makers are firms or individuals that actively buy and sell ETF units on the stock exchange. They are different from APs, but can sometimes perform both roles. So basically, about market makers, I would say that uh, in rare cases, you'll be finding that authorized participants, they themselves can actively participate as market makers as well. So there is a possibility that both of these could be the same entity or same type or group of individuals. Now here market maker, even though it could be the same entity, but as a market maker, it will have a different role to play. In other words, most common thing that will be found is authorized participant is a different entity. Market maker is a different entity. Even if it is the same entity, the role it plays will be a double role that will be role of an authorized participant where the biggest objective is to create and redeem units whereas market makers responsibility is to be there for the trading of these units actively and therefore creating a big level of liquidity and flexibility for the investors. So continue writing further providing liquidity market makers provide liquidity by being ready to buy and sell ETF units at publicly quoted prices. They facilitate trading by maintaining an inventory of ETF units and posting bid and ask prices. Stabilizing prices is the another function by continuously offering to buy and sell units market makers help reduce the volatility and ensure that ETF units can be traded quickly and efficiently. So I would want you to write up this whole thing and then I take you ahead in the discussion. All right, friends, I'm sure you would have completed writing this whole thing. So as I said earlier, this is going to be a big discussion and we have just got started. So I have divided this whole discussion into multiple parts. So let us put this part to an end and we begin with the next part in the next class. So stay tuned with me to have continued updation of this whole concept and many important concepts. So I'll see you in the next part very soon. Thank you very much for attending this class.